The HQ-S4 prop, I believe, is supposed to be the successor to the S3 prop. However, maybe it's just an alternative prop. Hard to say. It would make too much sense for them to just discontinue the S3 prop and only make the S4 prop. They love having every single prop they've ever made on the market so that they can confuse everybody as much as possible. Anyways, what you're watching me fly here is the S4 prop. But let's first go over the headline feature of the S3 prop before continuing. So the S3 prop's main feature is supposed to be its incredible response. And if you've flown it, you know that it is one of the, if not the most responsive props in the 4.8 to 5.1 inch category of props. Other props in the same category are the original 5040, HQ 5040, the glass nylon version, the HQ 5x4, sorry, 5x4.3 V1S, the Doll 5040C, the Doll 5051, the uh, T-Motor 5143, uh, what else am I looking at? Oh yeah, the Emacs Shimitar 2.6, and I'm sure I'm leaving something else out. Anyways, all those props that I named are all in the lightweight, super high response, acro-ish category of props. And so the S3 prop, in my opinion, and in my experimentation, feels like it's the most responsive one, even more responsive than the original HQ 5x4x3. Now the response isn't exactly the same as it, but it is, it is very interesting how close it is because they're two very different materials. Anyways, if I was to choose between those two, I would prefer the, the S3 prop. Now, the S3 the prop didn't come without drawbacks, it was just a slow prop in general, and even when you did try to go fast and give it more KV, it would just draw a whole bunch of amps and not go anywhere. So it was just drawing too much power for how little it was actually doing. Adding insult to injury, if you were just trying to cruise around, well, it was still pretty inefficient at just cruising around. So the two main issues are that it is slow, and it draws too many amps for what it's actually doing. And those were the two points that they were trying to solve with the S4. Now, the difference is that the S3 is supposed to be a 3.1 pitch and the S4 is supposed to be a 3.7 pitch. Like I've said before, who cares what these pitches actually are? The S4 is supposed to be slightly more aggressive than the S3. And so, if we treat it as such, it should technically draw more amps and be less efficient. However, I haven't found that to be true. While it does actually draw a little bit more amps at the top end, you are getting a lot more speed for those amps. So I wouldn't call that less efficient. I would actually call that a lot more efficient. Even though the maximum amp draw is a little bit higher, you get a lot more speed and you don't have to use the maximum RPM to do what you want to do. <clears throat> now the speed, while it is higher, I still wouldn't call it a high speed prop. I would say that the speed is very comparable to the HQ 5040 or 5x4x3 or the um, Doll 5040C or the T-Motor 5143. All those props are relatively medium speed props and I would put this prop in that same category. The, the Gemfan 5146.6 is a higher speed prop and there are many other props that are much higher speed than this. But I wouldn't call this prop too slow. I think the speed is totally adequate for general acrobatic flying, which is everything I do pretty much. I don't, I don't have an, I don't feel a need for more speed. <laughs> That's a little bit of a pun, I guess. I don't feel like I need more power or speed in my quad with this prop, which is a very good thing, especially since the quad that I'm flying in this video is 640 grams. It's a porky little pig. So uh, yeah, it's totally fine with this prop and everything's working great on 6S. I really like it. Now, like I said, the two places that it did improve were the speed and the efficiency. And also, like I said, if it's a steeper pitch prop, it should technically be less efficient because it's more aggressive. It's got a higher drag profile. However, in this case, it's not. And I'm going to try to kind of guess why, which isn't really a hard reason to guess why. Motors or these brushless systems, the whole brushless system is not the most efficient at low RPM or high RPM. It's usually somewhere in the middle where it's most efficient. And I would actually say that there are two sort of stages of efficiency. At the top end, this prop is giving you a lot more speed, drawing a little bit more amps, but the speed that you're getting compared to the amps that it's drawing is a lot more. So I would say that it's a lot more efficient at the top end my opinion and my frame of reference to what I'm calling efficient. You don't need to use as much 
power as much throttle to do what you want to do. So it's more efficient at the top end. It also gains efficiency at the cruising level because like I said, the whole brushless motor ESC system is most efficient somewhere in the middle range, not at the top, not at the bottom. And so this prop being a little bit more aggressive means that it's taking advantage of the torque of the motor. It doesn't mean that. It just it does a better job at using the natural torque that the brushless motor has so you don't need to push the motor into the RPM range that makes it less efficient. So the whole system tends to run more efficiently in the cruising mid-range level where the motor is naturally most efficient. Now this is purely a guess on what I think is happening but based on the stuff that I've learned over the years I'm kind of somewhat sort of certain that that's how it's working out. Whatever it is, this prop I personally have found to be more efficient at just general flying, not super high speed flying, but just general cruising about, I've found it to be much more efficient. Now, it's definitely not as efficient as something like the GemFan 5146.6 at just cruising around. The GemFan prop has an extra 0.1 inch uh, advantage over this prop. And like I've said in the past, I'm not super sure if that 0.1 inch really makes that big of a difference with respect to efficiency, but I, ha I do feel like it does because most of the 5.1 inch props that I've tried tend to do a better job at just cruising about. And in this case, I think the same thing is happening. So first things first, I would love to see this prop in a 5.1 inch to get that extra cruising efficiency back. Now the next thing that I'll talk about is the response of this prop. The, uh, also, before I continue, at max clip, this prop and something like the GemFan 5146.6 and many other props will draw similar amps and uh, I, I wouldn't say either one any of them are more efficient than the other at max amps at max max speed you're gonna you're gonna be drawing your battery dry really quick anyway so I don't even consider that as an option I'm basically just looking at my general cruising about and seeing about how much flight time I get which if you just cruise around you can get drastically different flight times on the GemFan 5146.6 I can get five six <clears throat> sometimes even seven minutes from an 1100 milliamp um, 6s battery on this prop I get three four I can push it to five, six minutes max. So if you just fly really efficiently, it is a pretty drastic difference from prop to prop. And that's how I generally test my cruising efficiency of these props. Now, the response of this prop is supposed to stay very high and it does stay very high. I can't tell the difference in the response between the S4 and the S3. Side by side, I can definitely feel like there's a difference. However, the feeling is probably more from the general speed increase than the actual uh, prop being more or less responsive. So that's a fantastic feature. The prop also weighs about 1.18 grams, 0.18 grams more than the S3 prop. And it feels a little bit more durable. Now, I didn't bring out the S3 prop, but the prop just feels slightly more durable than the S3 prop, which, hey, it's great. <laughs> no, no problems there. Uh, it's just very interesting that they were able to maintain a similar level of response while giving it more pitch and more weight. There's something to be said about the prop design and all that other stuff that goes into it. Now, I am kind of surprised that we still keep seeing so many new five inch category props coming out because we now have so many good props to choose from that just just buy them all and test them on your quads and see which one you like the best um, the ones that i like the most are this s4 prop is fantastic i actually like this prop as much as i like my own uh, fifth, no, sorry not my own the it's got my name on it, but the GemFan 5146.6, I find this S4 prop to be much easier to handle in tighter spaces because it doesn't have as much power as the 5146.6. It's also easier to stay low to the ground because the throttle is not, just, not as touchy. These are the benefits of having lower power in your quad, and that's why I fiddle with my throttle endpoint so much. Other props that I really love a lot are the um, T-Motor 5143, I think is a fantastic prop. And the Azure 5040, I think is a great, pro it might be a 5140. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually the 5140. Azure makes fantastic props. I really like that prop. I actually like the Shimitar um, 2.6 from Emacs a lot as well. However, it's not quite as efficient as these other props that I've been talking about. It's on the lower end of efficiency, maybe even a little bit less efficient than this S4 prop. I mean, just take your pick. There's so many good props to choose from. 
Before I go, I'll give you another tidbit about uh, dentistry and um, bacteria specifically, because there were a lot of questions about um, bacteria and the bacteria that cause cavities in my previous video or comments in my previous video. And a lot of people, you guys can ask me anything about dentistry all the time. Email me directly and ask me whatever you like about dentistry. I'm more than happy to respond. And you guys have been emailing me more and more about it. And it's, I just love it. I just love helping you guys out because I feel like I'm really like networked with you guys a lot. Anyways, bacteria, the bacteria that cause cavities, which is primarily strep mutans, is transmissible. Let's talk about children. So kids, when they're born, they don't have bacteria in their gut. They don't have bacteria in their mouth. They get all this bacteria from the mother, from the father, from the people that they interact with. If the mother has cavities or periodontal disease or any issues in their mouth with respect to disease and bacteria, they will often pass that to the child in the form of feeding the kid with the same spoon that they eat from, kissing the kid like crazy because that's what mothers do. And so that's why we highly recommend mothers or expected mothers to have their their decay or disease or anything in their mouth treated so that they don't pass this on to the baby. Now, different people have different biological makeups which kind of alter their oral flora and what's happening in their mouth. So it's not all like this. If you kiss your significant other and you do have cavities, it is definitely possible to transmit that bad bacteria to your significant other or whoever you're kissing, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna get cavities. It's likely that they will, but people, when they're adults, they have oral flora, they have flora, bacterial flora in their whole body that are resistive to things and non-resistive to things, and also the different strains of bacteria that cause cavities are also different from one another. So I'm just gonna cut this short and say, you can transmit, transmit cavities. Dental disease is transmissible. Be careful, uh, inspect people's mouths before you kiss them. Try not to kiss babies if you have a bunch of cavities. If you have an immaculate mouth with no cavities and you don't do anything to treat to take care of your teeth, which I have a lot of patients that are like that, you have hit the jackpot with respect to your teeth. You should go and kiss all the babies out there and give them your good bacteria because you're something special about your saliva. Now, the number of people that are like that are about one in a about a thousand, I would say, in my practice when I see patients. One out of a thousand just happens to have fantastic teeth, fantastic gums, no disease, and doesn't really do much to take care of their teeth. They don't floss, they brush like once or twice, maybe a day, not really, maybe once every other day, and they just happen to have great teeth as a result. A lot of those patients tend to come from other countries they were raised in other countries and they moved to the United States, which says a lot about our food and everything that we're eating because these, these people coming from like Africa have freaking immaculate teeth and na and just like, it's just frustrating that we don't care you know, in the United States. Like they don't do anything to censor food and censor sugar and censor all this crap. Okay, floss your teeth, take care, bye-bye.